Well, hi there. My name is Perry, and welcome to the Literary Literary. So today I am doing a 10 things I love in books video where I tell you about 10 uh, tropes or themes or elements a book can have in it that make me much more likely to be interested in or to pick it up and likely to love the book once I have read it. For each example, I will be giving you uh, two recommendations of books that I have read and liked that have that element in them um, with sort of a succinct like three buzzword description for each book. The three buzzword description thing is something I've seen floating around the internet before. I think directly I got it from books like Whoa. So yeah, without further ado, let's have a chat about things I love in books. Item number one is probably not a surprise if you know anything about me or my history, uh, but it is dance or theater as either a uh, plot element or setting for a book. I've loved the performing arts for as long as I can remember, and I've been heavily involved in the performing arts since I was about 10 years old. Whether it's the school play or a professional theater company or a prestigious ballet school, it's just a premise that's sure to get me excited. My first recommendation for this is Echo After Echo by Amy Rose Capetta, which is a young adult contemporary slash mystery slash romance. Uh, and it has a Greek play, um, a sapphic first love story, and murder. My second recommendation for this is Starcrossed by Barbara D. This has a Shakespeare play, a very age appropriate questioning character having their first crush, and frozen yogurt. All right, item number two often ties in with item number one. Uh, they can often be sort of thematically linked. And um, my second pick is uh, ambitious characters, especially ambitious female characters. I love a character with a lot of drive or with uh, who's very passionate about something, who's almost obsessive about things, who wants to be great, who doesn't want to let anything stand in their way. And the more intense these characters are, the better. My first pick for this is one that ties in with the first theme, as I said, and that is Tiny Pretty Things by Sona Chariapotra and Danielle Clayton. This is a sort of dark YA contemporary, uh, and it has a prestigious ballet school, um, lots of backstabbing and sabotage, and sort of frenemy type relationships. <laughs> My second pick is Tell Me How You Really Feel by Amina Mae Safi. Uh, this is a YA contemporary romance that has two very ambitious female leads, um, enemies to lovers trope, and like a cheerleader dates arts nerd trope. Okay, my third thing that I love in books is very closely related to the last one again, and that is characters who are convinced that they are smarter than everyone else. Can you tell that I am a Slytherin? Whereas the last one is something that will often make me like a character, this is something that will make me be fascinated by a character, but not necessarily like them. I will say that both of the books I'm about to recommend are pretty dark. I would definitely be interested if you had any recommendations that have this theme but are tonally sort of closer to like Hamilton with the line like, why do you assume you're the smartest in the room, where it's a character flaw but it's not necessarily as dark as in, say, The Secret History by Donna Tartt, which has adult dark academia, um, classic students, and pretentiousness. And my second pick is Gone Girl by Gillian Flynn, which is an adult sort of domestic thriller with, you know what Gone Girl is, so I guess breaking the format of my own video, it's Gone Girl. If you like thrillers, this is one of the best written thrillers I've ever come across, uh, if not the best written thriller I've ever come across, and it has that trope. So if you like that, you might like this. Okay, this next theme is a big one, and it is historical fiction with women doing things that we wouldn't traditionally think of as being encompassed by their traditional gender roles from the time period the book is set in. That can obviously go in a lot of different directions, um, and as I continue to read, I'm hoping to expand that into sort of also other marginalized groups doing things um, that we wouldn't necessarily expect of them in the given time period, um, even just like visibly existing because certain groups of people get written on history all the time. But um, the two sort of subgroups that will make me the most likely to pick up a book are A, historical fiction with lady detectives. My pick for this is A Spy in the House by Y.S. Lee, which is the first in a four book series that I just like wholeheartedly recommend. This has questions of race and class as well as gender. Um, an intelligent, competent heroine, um, and a really sweet slow burn romance that I adored. And the second main category of this that gets me super excited with almost no other information required is like a lady scientist book. In any period of history, like I will get jazzed about that book. My pick for this is The Countess Conspiracy by Courtney Milan, which is the third full length novel in her Brother Sinister series. It's a historical romance. And in addition to The Lady Scientist, it has um, Friends to Lovers, um, 
sensitive exploration of trauma and like a character who believes she's unlovable coming to believe that she deserves love. Honorable mention also to Talk Sweetly to Me by Courtney Milan also, which is a novella that features a uh, mathematician, a lady mathematician. Okay, the next thing I love in books is interesting love shapes, um, which by which I don't mean your bog standard love triangle where one girl has to pick between two guys or somewhat less frequently one guy has to pick between two girls, like no, boring. But um, if there are more than three people involved and usually also if at least one of those people is like bi or pan or queer, um, you can get some really interesting uh, tangled up convoluted love shapes. Once you need to draw a diagram to figure it out, sign me up. My first pick for this is In Other Lands by Sarah Reese Brennan, which is a portal fantasy that consistently subverts um, common young adult fantasy tropes and has a prickly main character learning to accept love. And my second pick is The Last True Poets of the Sea by Julia Drake, which is a Twelfth Night retelling with a beautifully atmospheric seaside setting and a heavy and nuanced exploration of mental health and family dynamics. Speaking of family dynamics, um, the next thing that I love in books is complicated sibling relationships, especially relationships between sisters. Um, this is not hard to figure out. It, it comes from my life experience. That's why I find it interesting. My first pick for this is Blanca y Roja by Anna Marie Mecklemore, which is beautifully written, is kind of a retelling of Swan Lake, kind of a retelling of Snow White and Rose Red. Uh, and is uh, queer and features Latinx representation. And my second pick is Summer of Salt by Katrina Leto, which uh, also features a beautifully atmospheric seaside setting, um, a sweet female-female relationship, and magic. The next thing that I love to see in books is I love when speculative fiction, so science fiction or fantasy, specifically uses the estranging mechanism of their speculative element to make us re-examine gender. Basically anything that makes us see that the way that we relate to gender is in fact culturally constructed um, and by showing us a different culture that rises from a different set of assumptions or conditions, Speculative fiction can show us our own society and culture in a new light, which is a huge project of speculative fiction anyway, is serving as a metaphor to some aspect or another of our current life, society, culture, etc. Um, I just like it when the metaphor is about gender. <laughs> so my first pick for this is a recent read, and that is The Brilliant Death by Amy Rose Capetta, which is a young adult fantasy with a beautiful Italian-inspired setting. Um, come to think of it, an ambitious main character and interesting sibling dynamics and shape-shifting. My second pick is uh, one I read a long, long time ago, which is The Left Hand of Darkness by Ursula Le Guin, which is an adult science fiction, which is a classic of feminist science fiction, uh, includes interplanetary travel and a very cold, snowy setting. Okay, the next thing that I love in books is sort of a very big picture uh, thematic element, uh, which is what I call like humanity perseveres. So I like stories where despite the greatest odds, despite all of our failings and mistakes, humanity continues to try and continues to live um, and continues to try to make itself better. My first example of this is one of my favorite plays of all time. You can see that she's a little beat up, uh, but this is The Skin of Our Teeth by Thornton Wilder. This won the Pulitzer Prize. It has an excellent balance between sort of like zany comedy and real thoughtfulness. And if you like retellings or interpretations of biblical stories, this could be a good pick for you. My second pick for this theme is Station Eleven by Emily St. John Mandel, which is a, an adult science fiction novel with a pandemic, warning, pandemic, but it also has um, theater as a significant plot element uh, because it, it focuses on a uh, traveling orchestra that also performs Shakespeare, and it has a lot of uh, flashbacks and non-linear storytelling and kind of an adventure story and it's amazing. The next thing I love in books is retellings but specifically retellings of either a specific text like a book or a play or of Greek or Roman myth um, or other myths that I'm reasonably familiar with. The distinction I'm making here is sort of to separate those retellings which are my favorites from like fairy tale and folklore retellings which I like but are not my my dearest loves. Obviously something I appreciate other retellings for is sort of broadening my horizons and giving me uh, an impetus to look into um, mythology and folklore from cultures I'm not as familiar with. That's all great, but for me 
the, the hook of a retelling is that it retells something I'm already familiar with. Um, my first example of this is The Gap of Time by Nanette Winterson. This is a retelling of The Winter's Tale. So this book is a really creative uh, contemporary retelling that deals with a lot of the sort of strangeness of A Winter's Tale really well. Um, it has some queer themes um, and it is beautifully written. And then my second pick is Longborn by Joe Baker, which is a retelling of Pride and Prejudice that recenters the narrative on the servants. Um, so there's a lot of questions of class and what the Bennett sisters don't see. Uh, and it does have a very sweet romance of its own. And my final theme that I just love to see in books is sort of a book that explores the importance of books and storytelling to our lives. This is probably not surprising. Um, I used to joke in school that my favorite things were books about plays and plays about books, and that's basically what I've talked to you about here today. Because I love books and storytelling in theater so much, stories about how important storytelling is to us just make me happy. My first pick for this is Anna in the Tropics by Nilo Cruz. This won the Pulitzer Prize, uh, and this is about Cuban immigrants to America in 1929 and their uh, cigar factory where they hire a lector to come read to them uh, and he reads them Anna Karenina and so it's about how that story, how they begin to read their own lives through that story and it is just gorgeous. The writing is gorgeous. The atmosphere is gorgeous. This will make you feel some things. And my final pick for the video is The Storied Life of A.J. Fickery by Gabrielle Zevin. This is a book with a bookstore setting, also a small island setting. Um, a grumpy, curmudgeonly, grieving man learning to love and participate in life again um, and using literature to give advice to his daughter um, and also a tearjerker of an ending. So yeah, that was 10 things I love in books and 20 hopefully relatively quick recommendations for books that feature those themes or tropes. Please let me know in the comments what your favorite things to see in books are and whether you have any recommendations for, let's say, lady detective books because I've really been looking for something to live up to that series by Y.S. Lee and I have not found it yet. As always, I hope you are staying happy, healthy, and safe and I hope that somewhere out there there is a great book waiting just for you. Bye!